Okay, guys. So good day. <coughs> Today we will continue the discussion about thermodynamics and the basic principles and concepts that are needed here in our subject. So for today, we will review the different dimensions and units that are used in problem solving in thermodynamics. First one, what is the difference between the dimension and the unit? So we all know that the dimension is any physical quantity that can be characterized by the dimensions. While the units, that is the magnitudes assigned to the dimensions, okay? So here in our subject, we have two set of units that are still common. That are still common, commonly used now, nowadays. So the first one is the English system which is known as the United States customary system. So English system. The second one is the metric system or yung SI natin. Tinatawag natin SI or the Le System Internationale the units. Okay? Which is also known as the international system. So, kadalasan ang problems sa thermodynamics is expressed in English system. So you need to convert properly and you need to review your different, different, how do you call this? Dimension in units, how do you convert meter into feet? So, common na yung class. So, the funda fundamental dimensions. So, ang unit, meters, centimeters, etc. So, ang dinasabing dimensions class, we have the length, the time, the mass. Okay? Length, time, mass. So, yan yung fundament, fundamental dimension na ginagamit natin sa subject natin. So, yung length natin, the distance between two points. So, this is very common just sa review. So, sa so, so, one hindi dito, but i-review lang natin. So, we have also the time in the mass. So, here in the table, you can see the different fundamental dimensions as well as the unit that are used in these dimensions. So, ito yung kadalasan na sa solve natin sa problem. We have the meter. When it comes to the dimensional length, meter, sa mass naman, kilogram. So, sa English unit class, yung length natin is in feet. While in yung mass natin sa kilogram, ang mass natin is kilogram sa unit natin. But in English system, that is more likely in pound mass or pounds, yes, I'll discuss ko din yan mamaya. The time, the temperature, so Kelvin class. We, we often use Kelvin here in the system in SI unit. Okay. We have the electric current, the ampere, amount of life, candela, and also the mole. Okay. So, the different English system. So, here, makikita nyo, we have pound mass. Sabi ko nga. So, pound mass, foot, and seconds. So, sa SI, sabi ko yung time natin is in. <coughs> Para as long. So, balikan natin. What do we need to understand about force? Bakit kailangan natin malaman yung force? Kasi, doon nagsisimula yung constant proportionality natin na K. Okay? So, ang sabi nila, in English system, force is usually considered to be one of the primary primary dimension and is assigned a non-derived unit. Non-derived unit siya pa sa, pero ipapakita lang natin kung paano yung na-solve na force na yan. Okay? So, we all know force is equal to mass times the... Force is equal to the mass times acceleration, the class. So, here, where your F is measured in pound force, and yung mass mo dito is pound mass and acceleration mo due to gravity is feet per second squared. And the one pound force, huwag niyong kakalimutan to. This conversion, the one pound force is defined as pound mass, a one pound mass accelerated 32.174 feet per second squared. Okay, so ito din, yung force unit natin, 
Ito na, yung force required, defined as the force required to the mass of 32.174 pound mass. So, ang equal class ng 1 slug, huwag yung kakalimutan tong 1 slug. Ayan. Wala pa tayong drawing table. Okay, 1 slug. Ito class, 32.174. So, here, paano yun na-derive? So, this is the, we all know force is equal to mass times acceleration. If we use here, in SI, madali lang to class. Ang force nyo is Newton. Newton, wherein it is equal also to, ang mass, ay, wait, ang mass nyo class is in kilogram, diba? Kj. Hindi pa tama yan. Kilogram times acceleration is mass times due to gravity is 9.81 per second squared. Diba? Naalala nyo class? So, 1 newton actually class in conversion is equal to 1 kilogram mass per second squared. So, here in English unit, you will see the force is a is in pound force. Ayan. Pound force. So, hindi pa yan class. Ang mass mo is in pound mass and acceleration in feet per second squared. So, dito sa SI, sa SI class, this is now balance. Diba? Ito yung sa SI mo. SI unit mo. Newton is equal to kilogram mass per second squared. That is the equivalent of that. Okay? So, here in, in English unit, or in, yes, in English, and in English unit, makikita nyo that your pound force and is not, it not equal. So, one side, makikita nyo is pound force, and dito sa kabila, pound mass feet per second squared. So, para ma-balance natin tong equation na to, okay, we need to put a, we need to multiply the equation by a constant k. Bakit kailangan natin? Para ma-balance yung equation natin, kasi sa SI, balance siya class, kasi ang 1 newton is also equal to 1 kilogram mass per, se per second squared. So, here, we need to balance then the unit of this constant k now is this one. How was this? Der Paano to na-derived class? So, yung 1 pound force mo. Nito. 1 pound force. Ito class 1 to. 1. Yung k mo considered as 1. Also, pound mass. What is the acceleration due to gravity? That is 32.174. So, ayan. Point. Ayan. Uh, Mahina pa ako class sa, ano. Hindi ko gamit yung iPad ko, pero, ayan. So, that is the acceleration due to gravity, wherein that is equal to 32.174. Kaya makukuha mo tong K. Kaya, ang magiging value ni K is this one. Okay? This is now your units. The K now is 1 over 32.174. Tama ba class? Kasi 1 dito, pound, pound force, ililipat mo yung second squared. And itong class na sa taas, they will be now your denominator here. So, we have now the constant K, which is equal to 1 over 32.174. So, pound force per second squared over pound mass per feet squared. Ay, per feet. Pound mass feet. Iba yung pound force sa pound mass class dito sa English unit. Okay? So, so eto nga, sabi ko. Kanina, yung Newton, so, in-explain ko na, your force is equal to mass times acceleration. So, yung Newton class is defined as the force required to accelerate a mass of 1 kilogram at a rate of 1 meter per second. 
kaya nakita nyo balance yung equation natin. So, okay. So, pulang dito class na at a rate of 1 meter per second squared. Ayan. So, this is now the equation. And also, this one, this is also the equivalent of 1 pound force, 32.174 pound mass, feet per second squared. Okay? That is also the derived equation. So, weight. If we have force, we have also weight. Diba? So, the term weight is often incorrectly used to express mass, particularly by weight watchers. Unlike mass, weight is a force. So, take note dito sa atin, pag tinatanong tayo sa forms as long, when we fill out, yes, forms, so, ano yun, class? Kadalasan yung natanong sa atin is, what is our weight? So, ang nalagay mo is kung sexy ka, 55 kilo, or 70 kilo, ganyan. So, that is wrong. Kung sa thermodynamics yan, class. Kasi, weight is considered as a force. Kung tinatanong ka, dapat ang sasagutin mo. So, we have your weight so times the gravity. So, if you have, if your weight, if your mass here is 50 kilogram on earth times the acceleration due to gravity, that is 9.81 meter per second squared. So, yun na po yung weight nyo in, expressed in Newton. Okay? Sabi ko nga dito, oh. Ayan. <coughs> so, local acceleration due to gravity yung ginamit ko. Hindi to. What is the difference between the pound mass and the pound force? Ayan, class. Pinakita ko lang dito at a sea level of 1 kilogram weighs 9.81 newton. A, pound, a mass of 1 pound mass, however, weighs 1 pound force, which mid, misleads people to believe that pound mass and pound force can be used interchangeably as pound. Okay. Ito class yung major error sa English system. Okay. So for example, Dito, on the right side. You'll see here, yung pound mass natin. Ito. So, since we have 1 kilogram, 1 bagay yan, class. Ay, sorry. 1 kilogram, so 1 times 9.81. So, magiging 1 kilogram mass per second squared. So, this is now. Okay. And, we all know that kilogram mass per second is just equal to Newton. So, 9.81 Newton. So, we have now. This is also class the equivalent of 1 kilogram force. Okay. Kilogram force. KJF class. Pag force yan. Mm -hmm. So, iba yung KJF then sa kilogram mass. Okay. Here, Ito na class, yung pinagkaiba ng pound force sa pound mass. Here also, we have one pound mass. Ay, wait, class. We have one pound mass here. One pound mass. Pound mass. Ayan. Times the acceleration due to gravity in English system, which is equal to 32.174 feet per second squared. So, you need to multiply this. So, this is now your unit. 1 pound at uh, 32.174 pound mass feet per second squared. Okay. Kikita nyo yan, unit natin. But, take note, in the previous slide, hindi pala. In the previous slide, slide, 1 pound force is just equal to 32.174 pound mass feet per second squared. Okay? I hope ulitin nyo na lang yung class so that ma-master nyo and you know the difference between the pound mass, the pound force, the kilogram mass, and the kilogram force. Okay? So, here are the other important properties 
So, density class. So, density is the raw unit. Niya. So, any substance is its mass, not weight. Oh, ulit, ulitin natin na yung mass iba yung sa, sa weight. Okay? So, iba siya class. So, we have density is equal to mass times the I, density is equal to mass over the volume. So, basically, we use the SI unit. So, we have kilogram mass, kilogram per cubic meter. So, that is the density. We have also the specific volume. So, when it comes to specific volume, class the word specific here means that the volume per unit time. I mean, per unit mass. I'm sorry. Per unit mass. So, take note that specific volume, so, ganito siya. May, ano siya. The symbol there for specific volume is like this. So, volume over mass, which is equal to 1 over the density. Bakit? Pag dinerive mo to class, we all know that density, okay, have the density is equal to mass over the volume. So, pag volume class, capital yan. Volume. Dinerive dito yung volume is just equal to also into mass over density. So, pag sinubstitute natin siya dito sa first equation, so, we have na the specific volume is just equal to volume mo mass over density and all over the mass. Makakancel yung mass mo so, that is now equal to, your specific volume is just equal to 1 over the density. Okay. Ayan na. Equal na siya sa. So, that is just, the actually, that is the reciprocal of density. So, if we have the unit of density in kilogram per cubic meter, then the unit also in specific volume is the reciprocal of that, which is cubic meter per kilogram. Another one is the specific gravity or yung relative density natin. So, kadalasan, ito yung ginagamit natin class. Okay? So, I mean, ito yung given sa problem, the specific gravity or yung relative density na tinatawag. Okay? Ang specific gravity class is a dimensionless unit. Okay? Dimensionless to class. Dimensionless. Bakit? Maka-cancel class yung unit mo dito ng density. Kung ano yung density ng substance over the standard density of the fluid. For example, if the fluid is water, we have, I mean, is a liquid, then the standard of that is H2O. If the fluid is air, I mean gas, the standard for that is density of that substance. Substance to class. Substance. And substance. The density of that substance over the density of the air. Bakit air? Because if the fluid is the is classified as gas, ang standard class kang gases is density ng air. Ang standard kang liquid density ng H2O. So, given dito yung density ng H2O, we have 1,000 kg per cubic meter. So, given din kalalasan yung density ng substance. Okay, for example, the the density of mercury. Yes. Mercury. The density of mercury 
is 13,600. And 13,600. Ang bagaw ni Mama Magsula. 13,600. So, ang magiging specific gravity niya kasi divided by the density of the H2O. Then, the specific gravity now. SG mo doon sa mercury is 13,000, I mean 13.6 plus the unit for mercury is in steam table is HG. Am I right? HG to class ha? HG. So that is the specific gravity. So dimensionless quantity and class ha? We have also the specific weight. So, ang specific weight class. Okay. Ang specific weight class, we need to... So, if we have weight din, then, pag sinabi specific weight naman, kung kanina specific volume, the over is per unit mass. Then, here, ang specific weight naman class is the weight of the unit volume of a substance. Weight over the volume naman siya. So, that is now the specific weight. So, how was, paano to na derive? Equal din siya sa data. So, this is the basic formula. Specific weight is equal to weight over the volume. So, we all know that weight is equal to mass times the gravity equal to m times the gravity and the volume and yung volume natin, anong equal niya class? Kahit i-over mo to. And we all know that the density over the volume, I mean the density is equal to mass over the volume. Therefore, mangyayari density na to class. So, kaya equal din siya sa density times the gravity. Ang G natin dito is gravity. So, that is the specific weight. Okay? So, here is the example. So, I will explain a... I will separate a lesson for all examples. So, para mas maintindihan, gagamitin natin yung iPad natin para mas madali. Okay? I'll turn it so next class is the temperature and temperature scales also we have a different discussion and an example for this but proceed. so we all know the temperature is the temperature of a measure that is a measure of hotness or cold so alam na alam yan so kanina we have thermal equilibrium sabi ko nga no change in thermal equilibrium so first the previous lessons natin so it is for example, paano mo mas maiintindihan tong thermal equilibrium? So, common experience that a cup of hot coffee left on the table eventually cools off and a cold drink, drink eventually warms up. So, mainit yung kape mo. Pag iniwan mo yan, malipot na. Ba kung yung tigasabi ta? So, from hot to cold, anong nangyayari? That is, a body is brought into contact with another body that is at different temperature. So, heat is transferred from the body at higher temperature to the one. Always from higher to the lower temperature. So, ang nangyari class, mainit yung tubig mo, nag-transfer sa cup. Diba? Nag-transfer na sa cup yung mainit na tubig. Kaya mainit na lang class, pati kikaputan mo ang cup. Automatically, until both bodies attain the same temperature, ang tawag doon class ay thermal equilibrium. Okay, sabi dito, at that point, heat transfer stops and the two bodies are said to be, are said to have reached thermal equilibrium. Okay, so naabot niya, kaya malipot na class, ibig sabihin na reach niya yung point ng thermal equilibrium. So, the equality of temperature is only the requirement equality of temperature. Then, di ba, yung temperature na natin is from boiling, 100 degree. So, bumaba na siya, 25 na lang. So, yun na magiging temperature niya. Thermal equilibrium na siya. 
So, the very first law in thermodynamics, so the zeroth law, so siya yung pinakaunang law ng thermodynamics. So, it states that if two bodies are in thermal equilibrium, they are, they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. Okay? I mean, two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with the third body. So, they are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. So, ganun kasi yung zeroth law of thermodynamics. So, by replacing the third body with the thermometer, the zeroth law can be restated as two bodies are in thermal equilibrium if both have the same temperature reading even if they are not in contact. Okay? So, paano nga ba na formulate itong zero law? So, that is first, that was first formulated and labeled by R.H. Fowler in 1931. So, it was named the zero law since it should have preceded the first and the second laws of thermodynamics. So, all temperature scales are used on, based on some easily reprodu reproducible states, so, such as freezing and boiling points of water. So, papasok ng dito yung ice point, steam point natin, respectively. Okay. So, ito yung ginagamit na temperature scale today. So, you have Celsius and the Fahrenheit. Alam na alam nyo na yung class. In thermodynamic class, we also use different temperature scale. We use this, the Kelvin and the Rankine scale. Okay? Ano ang Kelvin scale? So, that is designated by the unit K. Okay? So, the lowest temperature in Kelvin scale is absolute zero. Zero, okay? So, how do we, how Kelvin scale is related to Celsius scale. So, the temperature in Kelvin, ito class, this is now, temperature niya, so, yeah. <coughs> if given sa'yo is in degrees Celsius, then you just add 273.15, then that is expressed now in Kelvin. But in the Rankine scale, so, English system to class, yung Kelvin pala, that is in SI. So, designated by R din, yung Rankine cycle natin. So, the temperature R is equal to the temperature degree Fahrenheit plus 459.67. Kung kanina, Celsius, dadagdagan mo ng 273.15 to make it in temperature Kelvin, while here, Rankine, I mean, Rankine, paano mo siya makakuha? Then, if you have degree Celsius, then convert it first to Fahrenheit. After that, add 459.67. Okay? So, elaborated how the temperature, the relationship between temperature. So, here is the example. If you have computed the 1.8 temperature Kelvin, okay? So, yung Rankine mo equals sa 1.8 temperature Kelvin. So, this is just the basic conversion of the different temperature scales. The thermodynamic temperature scales. So, you have here apat yan, degree Celsius, degree Fahrenheit, Rankine, and Kelvin. So, this is the connection and also this is the difference. When we say the difference between the temperature Kelvin, that is also equal to the temperature the change in temperature. So, here, the, this is the triangle. Okay, the delta. Kadalasan. So, this is the change in Kelvin, which is equal to the change in temperature ng degree Celsius. So, ito class, pag na-minus mo na yung dalawa, yung magiging equal yun. Okay? This will be, an example here will be showed on other video. So, this is also an example. Sabi ko nga yung example, another video. Para mas Here, we have also the pressure and the pressure measuring devices. So, we all know that pressure is also defined as the normal force exerted by a fluid per unit area. So, since pressure is defined as a force per unit area, that is also equal. So, force over area. We all know that force in SI unit is in Newton. 
and also in <coughs> excuse me the area is in we all know that the land times read diba? land times read yung area so kadalasan yung NSI meter squared na siya so that is so this is the basic conversion in pressure <coughs> So this one, one Pascal, that is equal to one Newton per meter squared. One Pascal, yeah. So may tinatawag tayo mas na atmospheric pressure. Excuse me. Okay, class. So may tinatawag tayong atmospheric pressure. So the reference atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeter hg what is millimeter of hg that is in mercury and, or that is equal to 29.92 inch hg at 32 degree fahrenheit or ito yung sinasabi natin in psia <coughs> excuse me that is 14.696 pound per square inch Absolute. Kaya may A yan, class. ATM. Atmospheric pala. PSIA. Okay? And we have also this conversion. What? At one atmospheric pressure is equal to 14.696 PSI. And this one, one atmospheric pressure is equal to 1 of 1. 101, 300, 324, 1325 Pascal. That is also equal to <coughs> 101.325 kilopascal. And one, one atmospheric pressure is equal to 1.01325 bar. So take note of this units. Okay. We have also the absolute pressure. Okay. If we have the atmospheric, so that is the standard, we have also the absolute pressure. The absolute pressure class is the actual pressure at a given position. So, given sa atin yung elevation, position class yan. So, kadalasan relative to absolute vacuum ang nami-measure natin sa absolute. We have also the gauge pressure. So, ang gauge pressure class, kadalasan na may measure siya using the pressure measuring devices. Okay? Dapat calibrated siya into zero kasi yung atmospheric pressure nga natin. Makikita mo, may indicate niya yung difference between the absolute and the local atmospheric pressure. So, ang difference nun, class, ang tawag niya is gauge pressure. And also, the vacuum pressure. What is a vacuum pressure, class? That is the gauge pressure that can be positive or negative. Take note of the word, can be positive or negative. But pressure below, so pag below yung shock class, automatic. Below atmospheric pressure, ang tawag niyo sa kanila ay vacuum pressures. Okay? nag indicate din siya ng difference between the atmospheric and the absolute. Okay? Ulitin ko lang, yung gauge pressure natin pwede siyang positive or negative. But pressure below that, tawag mo nun ay vacuum pressure. Okay, class. Ulitin lang natin. So, sabi ko nga, kung negative yung gauge pressure mo, PG, kasi sabi ko nga, the gauge that is negative or below the atmospheric is called vacuum pressure. So, how do we get the absolute pressure? So, do we just need to subtract from the atmospheric minus this one minus to class so makukuha mo na yung absolute pressure natin but when it is positive ang gauge mo you just need in getting the absolute pressure you just need to add the gauge and the basic atmospheric pressure okay so yan na kukuha mo na yan. Basic yun, class. Ito naman, class, pag sinasabing pressure head, alam natin, when it comes to fluid, so, may atmospheric pressure tayo, may given depth yung vertical 
at a certain height, given sa atin yung distance or yung Z mo, pero sometimes H yan class. Ano tong H? Pressure head yan class. Okay. So, the pressure at a certain depth H below the free surface becomes. So, para makuha mo yung pressure below that fluid at a certain height, we need to add atmospheric plus this one. This is the head. So, density times the gravity times the H. Iba to class kasi fluid to. Static fluid. Pag static fluid, kadalasan to class liquid to. Liquid. Okay? Para makuha mo yung pressure below that, you need to add the here, the atmospheric plus this one. So, that is the pressure at that point, at here, this point. Ayan. Okay? So, what is the basis for this? So, the basis for this pressure measuring devices, how do we compute the atmospheric the gauge and the absolute pressure? So, ang basis niyan is the Pascal's law. Okay? So, ang Pascal's law class, the fluid, the consequence of fluid in a fluid remaining constant in the horizontal direction is that the pressure applied to the confined fluid increases the pressure throughout the same amount. Ibig sabihin, at the same part of the fluid, equal siya. Okay? So, Pascal's also mean that force applied by a fluid is proportional to the surface area. Okay. The Pascal's law also class that at any point in the flu fluid at rest, the pressure that is the same, the pressure is the same at all directions. So, take note of that. Okay. So, same po in all directions. Well, here class is the pressure measuring devices. So, makikita nyo naman to class. So, we have the barometer. Ayan yung atmospheric pressure natin. So, the unit of millimeter Hg is also call, called TOR. Okay? In honor of Tori Sealy. So, 1 ATM is equal to 760 TOR but because that is equal to 760 millimeter each. Okay? So, this is the barometer. Open po class sa atmosphere yung mercury natin. Pero may vacuum at some point. Yung manometer naman class. That is a device where any fluid column can be used to measure pressure differences. So, pressure differences ang ginagamit papasok si manometer. Ano yung kadanasang minimeasure niya is small and moderate pressure differences. We also use <coughs> manometer consists of glass or plastic U-tube containing one or more fluids such as mercury, alcohol, or oil. So, heavy fluids such as mercury are used if large pressure differences are anticipated. And here is the actual picture of a simple U-tube manometer. And also, some of the engineers used inclined manometers, so inclined shaft or door itself, slanted tube in order to increase the resolution or precision when reading the fluid height. The Borden tube, so this is also used. So, madami siyang types class. Kadalasan may needle siyang tinatawag na dial, calibrated din siya sa gauge pressure pressure transducer. So, this is now the modern sense pressure sensors. Okay, nag a conversion of pressure effect to electrical effect such as change in voltage resistance or capacitance. Smaller din siya class and faster, more sensible and reliable and precise than their the medical counter mechanical counterparts. Nakaka-measure siya ng pinakamaliit. Less than a millionth of one at atmospheric pressure. So, here are the different atmospheric pressure. So, 
uh, gauge pressure transducer, absolute trans transducers, differential pressure transducers, trench gauge tra pressure transducers, and piezoelectric transducers. Okay, now we're so alam nyo na, this is just used kasi modern class. We have also de the dead weight tester. So here class is often used in calibration and can measure extremely high pressure. So kadalasan nyo tong basic sample nito also. So this is the big one. For smaller weights, you, we use hydraulic jack. Okay, take a break and have some trivia. Did you know that the atmospheric pressure changes from 101.325 at sea level to 89.88, 79.5, and down below at the different altitudes? Okay, pataas ng pataas si class. Sabi daw dito class, cooking takes longer at high altitudes since water boils at a, a lower pressure at a lower atmospheric pressure. Sabi in class, <coughs> Pag nag-hiking, baga ka mo class. Pag nag mas difficile naman class magluto. Okay? Kasi nga, mas malipot duman, di ba? Kasi lower temperature, at well, as well as lower atmospheric pressure. So, hindi ma ma madali yung pag-transfer ng heat. Okay? And the consideration there is higher, ay lower temperature and lower atmospheric pressure. Also, nose bleeding. Oh, sa mga nag nose bleed chan is a common experience at high altitudes since the difference between the blood pressure and the atmospheric pressure is larger. So, the delicate walls of veins in the no nose are often unable to withstand this extra stress. Ibig sabihin class, pag pumunta ka, nagtukad ka, pumunta ka doon sa pinakatap ng Pag nag-hike ka, kung hindi naman sana yung mga tissues mo dito sa nose, automatically yung nag-nose bleed. So, hindi ka sanay. Hindi sanay yung nose mo doon kasi higher yung difference ng blood pressure mo sa atmospheric pressure. Okay? And also, this one, last but not least, trivia. For a given temperature, the density of the air is lower at high altitudes. Okay? Thus, a given volume contains less air and less oxygen. Kaya ba, class, pag nagtutukad ka or nag-hike ka, nag-ihingal ka, diba? Okay. So, ayan na. So, it is no surprise that we tire more easily and experience breathing problems at high altitudes, okay? To compensate this effect, people living at higher altitudes develop more efficient lungs. Okay, yun naman para may advantage naman bala class. Okay, so here class, this is now your basic manometer. I will discuss the computations and the different, the different, oh, I mean, I will discuss more examples and how do we solve like these problems. So here man class, pinakita lang dito on what is the pressure between this level from point 0.1 to point 0.2. So, the pressure at point 0.1 to point 0.2 is equal. Take note of that. And the pressure and the pressure from point 0.2 that is equal to since open siya class to atmosphere. So that is now equal to atmospheric pressure plus the gauge. And the gauge niya, so density times the gravity of that. So that is now the pressure at this point. So here class, how do we compute the pressure at point 1? You just need to add, if it is open to atmosphere, then atmospheric pressure plus the first fluid. Kasi pag iba-iba class yung fluid, iba-iba din yung specific gravity mo and also the density. Okay? Density of this different. If the fluid is mercury, then the density of that is 13,600. If the fluid too is uh, I mean, if the fluid number 2 is a seawater, then sometimes it is 750 kilogram mass per cubic meter or 800 kilogram mass kilogram per cubic meter. 
and also if the fluid tree is water then the density of that is 1000 kg per cubic meter so nagaiba iba class yung density niya as well as yung height kung yung elevation niya so that is now the the pressure at point 1 so you just need to sum you add this up the atmospheric the the density times gravity the h1 so on and so forth you just need to sum up all this and you can find out the pressure at that point okay and also we have also here so how do we compute the pressure at point this is now the so-called pressure difference between point one and point two okay so my fluid to my fluid on you just need to on the left side okay pag nag add ka class so here pressure one pababa ka class automatic mag add ka ayan the density of this ang height nito class even though nag uh, this is inclined the height of this is considered horizontal from point 1 to point A so the height of that is A plus H so this one ayan ayan since point a and B equal dyan yung temperature. Pag pataas ka naman class, automatically, magma-minus ka na yan. Okay? So, density nito, kasi ibang fluid, at certain height, minus, kasi nga pataas ka na. And, minus ulit, is iba ulit yung density nito. Density, and yung height niya. So, that is now equal to pressure 2. So, this is now your formula here. If given, kung parehas yung orientation nito, class. Ganito yung computation niya. Okay? So, magbibigyan naman ako ng example where in numerical. Okay? Here is the example of that, the different example. We'll just discuss this in another way. Okay, so thank you class. So the references here. So, meron tayong mga books na ginamit dito. So, thank you for that. And, thank you class. So, I will upload a separate video for the computations, the examples here, so that you can understand more. Okay? So, thank you and God bless.